Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. Now I'm going over the Port Swigger Labs again, but I'm going to try and provide some extra context for you wherever possible. So in this first one we have no filtering, it's pretty easy. It's reflected cross-site scripting into the HTML context with nothing encoded. Now they talk about reflected cross-site scripting. When I talk about it, I'll try to talk about it about source reflected and DOM reflected because you have source reflected and uh, you have source stored. You have your DOM reflected and you have your DOM stored. So um, in this case, source reflect cross-site scripting into the HTML context, which is really important. This is the HTML context, might as well be the JavaScript context or one of the many other contexts out there. Uh, and a lot of these issues are being missed because people don't recognize that it's reflected into specific contexts, for example. Like, a lot of beginner hunters, when they start learning about cross-site scripting, what they'll learn about is only HTML context injection. But later on, we'll see that there are other things that we can try as well. Now, first thing I have to do when I see a search page is I try to get something to get reflected, like I haven't found anything for this specific string that you're trying to find. Um, but the thing is, search functions are going to be protected. Um, if you look at the home page of a web shop, you're probably not going to find reflected cross-site scripting in the HTML context in there. Um, so it's important that you understand what's going on exactly and look at every single parameter where you could have reflection. Not just the ones that are visible to you, but also the ones in your burp suite. So very important. There are things going on in the background. You can see them. Maybe they cause some reflection. Maybe it's worth investigating if they're user controllable. So um, in this case, it's HTML context. It's pretty easy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and insert a broken image. I know a lot of people don't like it because I'm also using a space in here. I'm using second. Uh, I'm using an attribute in here. So this looks a lot more like an HTML tag than a very simple B, for example. But that's what you prefer. If you prefer doing this with a B, go ahead. It, it you probably shouldn't be like. If this is filtered for me, if my image is going to be filtered, I might try and step it down and try just with the B to see if I can find anything that's reflected in bold in that case. It's all up to you. Now, what matters a lot is that you select a random string, copy that string. So later on, if you see your page source completely, you can actually go and look for that string in every place that it's reflected. It's not always reflected only in the HTML context. Sometimes there are other places. Important to understand. Now in this, ooh, sorry. <laughs> now you know what I'm looking at a little bit. So in this place, a little um, for these specific vulnerabilities in here, it's pretty simple. I have my image source equals X. I'm just going to try and add an attribute in, um, an event handler in here uh, on error equals alert. Now I'm purposefully writing alert here because I want to highlight that alert is something that is often filtered. Every developer and their grandmother is going to know about that alert function. So what a lot of people will do is they've started using confirm that's also filtered. You might use prompt. It, it really depends, but there's also variations on this. Like I can put one of these letters into capitals uh, like this. So I can, I can do things there. Um, I can, like for example, if, if none of this works, I can try to use the eval function. Um, I can do a lot of things in here. Um, but for now, just try and, and just get some basic cross-site scripting because when you're starting out with this, you want to know that your context that you're reflecting in is important. Right now I'm reflecting in the HTML context, so I should insert my HTML tag in here. And if I do this properly, of course, um, I don't know what went wrong exactly, but it doesn't really matter. So let's just do this again, image source equals X. Then I'm going to add my event handler. Ooh, that's not good. Image source equals X, add my event handler on error equals alert oh, sorry confirm i was going to con confirm but i'm going to prompt now prompt if i can type there we go and as you can see the prompt is popping up but in a real scenario 
If you're a pen tester, of course, this is definitely report worthy. If you're not, this is also report worthy as a bug bounty hunter. But try to elevate this at least. Give it a shot because this is medium at most. And the thing is, a lot of people are going to go to stealing cookies. But everybody knows that session cookies should be secured right now. Every pen tester is going to catch that out and report it. And it's an easy fix. So it's going to get implemented. <coughs> Sorry about that. So about that, just try and do something different. Try to be imaginative and, for example, try to steal the CSREF token because then you can do some real harm. You can actually get them to change their email address into yours and then you can actually request a password to reset and bam, you have an account takeover. Or you might steal some data on the page. Or you can be creative, but just a prompt of confirm and alert it's not going to be good enough at least try to make it better and try to elevate and if you're looking for any ideas just go on google just look on elevate cross-site scripting and you'll find a bunch of things to look at and i'll put some articles in the description as well of what you can do to actually elevate your cross-site scripting attacks thank you very much for watching i hope you found this informative and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hacker.